Introduction Five Key Market Factors Welcome to the Five and Five, where we at Harvest are going to be talking about five key factors that we've been watching in the broader markets over the past month. I'm going to start out with talking a little bit about equity leadership styles and the breadth. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the economic data that we've been following, uh, its volatility and uh, looking at uh, its implication for interest rates. Uh, then we're going to look at what's been really working and everybody knows it. Uh, we'll talk very briefly there because everybody knows it. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what's happening and what's been working underneath the surface. Uh, and finally, our fifth uh, thing that we'll be reviewing is what we've been doing at Harvest over this past month. Part one, equity leadership style and market breadth. Uh, before I get into equity leadership styles and breadth, just want to highlight, uh, we're at that time of year when we often hear sell in May and go away. Uh, so we've looked at some seasonality data and unequivocally that's not true. And in fact, we found June a very busy month, uh, led of course by tech. And in fact, when we look back over the past 10 years, June, July and August have all had positive returns on average. On July in particular, nine out of the past 10 years uh, has had strong positive returns. Uh, so I think everybody has seen in the past month, tech has really been driving the market. That continues to be the case year to date. Uh, we are starting to see it's not just within tech, we can start to break it down by styles. Uh, we did have a, an opportunity to have Professor Jeremy Siegel on a webinar this month who was talking about value in particular and the significant underperformance of value relative to momentum. Uh, and we can certainly see that with uh, the S&P 500 Momentum Index uh, you know, up 35% plus compared to the value index, up only five. Our view would continue to be that as the economy improves, we will start to see some breadth. Uh, however, it does remain narrow in this environment. Part two, economic data, volatility, and interest rates. So we're going to now talk about economic data, volatility, and rates. And so I think the big picture to take away here is that our view would be we're in transition from the hiking to an easing cycle. In this particular environment, the time frame is still to be determined on when we're going to shift to more of an easing, but we are in transition and we have to be cognizant during this period, uh, we in the market in general are going to be very sensitive to economic data points in either direction, and even perhaps economic data points that in normal environments, we quite frankly, could care less about. And so when we look back at the, the course of June, uh, we, we certainly saw at the start various employment data, jolts data, um, we're starting to soften. We saw some of the manufacturing data was relatively modest, uh, but then all of a sudden in the second week of June, bang, we saw uh, one strong data print on uh, non-farm payrolls and we saw the longer end bond yields move up quite significantly in a short period. Month over month bond yields are down um, and so that really does follow with the view uh, that we have that things are starting to normalize. Inflation is coming under control. I will talk about it in a few moments just about what we do with that information when we see this type of volatility, in particular in rates. Uh, our view remains that the shorter end being the federal fund rates in the U.S. will come down over time uh, and uh, the longer end rates will come down, perhaps not quite as aggressively. Part three, what's working? Okay, so, uh, so what's wor working and everybody knows it. Uh, obviously, tech continues to be very strong. As I highlighted earlier, momentum is really though uh, the leading factor in the market. And so we see that not just within the big concentrated tech, uh, but we also see that in other areas of momentum uh, and pockets within subsectors. I would highlight healthcare as a great example where we had some just wonderful data out over the past month on Eli Lilly, not just in obesity with their sleep apnea results, uh, full results, but also in areas like Alzheimer's. So there are pockets of momentum outside of tech. I, and I think those areas as we've seen, people are, are continuing to gravitate towards the more momentum-based names. Over time, we would expect, though, that some of these other uh, styles will participate. Part four, what's working beneath the surface? 
Okay, so what's, a, what's working and perhaps isn't being uh, caught across, uh, across en masse? I, I would start out and say the banks, and I know, uh, don't fall off your chair, I'm not talking about the Canadian banks, I'm talking about the US banks. And when we look back, uh, just over the past month, there has been some volatility, but if we extend that out year to date, and even over the past year, US banks are actually performing very well, uh, you know, up, you know, significantly more than their Canadian counterparts, in part because of some of the economic differences. Uh, I would also highlight some of those themes that we hear about in technology being AI and data. We're seeing that first derivative conversation start to surface, and that includes in areas like infrastructure build out and new uh, manufacturing facilities, which are going to require more technologically advanced equipment impacting and having a positive impact on the industrials and right down to the power demand that is going to be required for data centers. And so of course, uh, AI has the, the uh, eye of the market right now. ChatGPT using you know six to 10 times more power than a Google search. And so our view would be that these are themes that perhaps are a little bit further out, but we are starting to see them and be talked about in the broader markets. Part five, monthly review, the Harvest Playbook. Okay, lastly on uh, harvest activity during this past month, uh, we only had one of our funds rebalanced. Uh, we are preparing for several of our core funds next month to be rebalanced and reconstituted. I would highlight with some of the comments I made earlier about pockets of momentum within subsectors, certainly volatility within uh, the fixed income uh, interest rate environment. This is the type of environment where volatility is it tends to be elevated in specific pockets. And that really does allow us in our option strategy to be much more active. And that's exactly what we've seen across each one of our funds. The, the right levels have varied across uh, specific names. Uh, and of course, has allowed us to actually participate a little bit more in select positions uh, in recoveries as they've bounced off of their lows. Subscribe to Harvest ETF's Insights. Join us and stay informed.